What is something we need to stop teaching children? I think you shouldn't shield children too much from tough choices adults have to make. I gently explained to a 10-year-old that I don't see my brothers because I didn't think they were very nice to me. And he just accepted that I think we shouldn't teach children to forgive abusive and destructive behavior just because it's family. A friend of mine told me about a problem like this. One of their siblings had serious problems with boundaries and verbal abuse but the family insisted. They just needed help and it couldn't be held against the monsieur. Despite that person never trying to get help, sometimes actively refusing it, and terrorizing the rest of the immediate family, basically until they moved out for college. Apparently they mellowed out now, but my friend refuses to pretend it never happened, like her parents. There was no apology or owning up to how awful it was. So she doesn't want a relationship with her sibling and the entire family seems to think that makes her a bad person. I can't imagine how brutal it must feel, literally my brother, that abuses are only strange men offering candy to the monsieur. In most cases a predator is someone close to the kid. Also the fact that kids can be manipulated into going along with things. Just because you weren't physically restrained doesn't mean it wasn't abuse. And that it wasn't their fault. Many are convinced that because they weren't physically restrained it's their fault and therefore wasn't abuse. That teachers will handle bullies. Sometimes they tell you just ignore them or man up. I tell my kids to take three steps to bullying. Tell me to tell the teacher three. If the teacher doesn't do anything, take care of it yourself. That way I can say, hey, she tried to do it your way. You failed her so she took care of it. Schools say, you tell them if someone bullies you then turn around and amp. Say that they don't have authority to punish anybody. If the school can't help it's better for the parent to intervene. Ignore the bullying and it will st No it doesn't, you need to stand up for yourself. Oh my gosh yes. I was so miserable in elementary school until my folks were like. If you stand up for yourself we will defend you no matter what. I didn't fight anyone or throw punches but it did give me the courage to retaliate when they gave. Me flack. As someone that did throw a punch. That single punch set the precedent for the remainder of my school days. I wasn't having a good time at school because of the bully. My dad's advice was, next time it happens, punch him in the nose as hard as you can. Breaking your bully's nose and knocking him unconscious with a single punch is as satisfying as it sounds. 28 years later I still have a very clear memory of the look on his face when he woke up and realized he was lying in the dirt, face covered in blood and tears streaming down his face. That doing more is better. One of my friends is constantly stressed with her extracurricular classes and all the hours of extra homework she has and she often has to stay up long after she should be asleep to finish all the homework. I think it is good to have extracurricular activities. But I feel like you shouldn't force your kid to do the monsieur. I know a kid who has one day a week where she doesn't have every minute of her day planned out and amp taken over by activities. That one day is not spent being a kid, it's spent doing asterisk fun, asterisk things her mom wants to do. Or mostly playing alone, playing games, watching movies or TV on her iPad alone, while her mom plays video games. They have to finish their whole plate of food. Portion sizes are out of control. This and do not give kids food when they are sad or when something goes wrong. It could introduce them to stress eating and filling whatever void they feel in their heart with food. And that's how food became my drug of choice years before actual drugs were available. That if someone is picking on them, that means they like the monsieur. Usually that's not the case, it's bullying. Also bullies don't bully you because they're sad. They do it because imposing their will on others through overpowering them and inflicting violence gives them pleasure. Also, it wouldn't matter if it was because they're sad. 
you should still punch the bully in the face. Yeah, don't forget, ignore them and they will go away. I know that's what I tell all my adult friends about dealing with assailants. That smarts are more valuable than grit. I'm a 30-year-old former, gifted child. No one ever taught me about discipline or establishing a routine. But they were quick to pat me on the head and hand out medals when I did something smart. I was just taught that I had something innate that other people didn't. And when the rubber met the road I had to teach myself to study and to do a little bit of work. Every day essentially from scratch. Same exact thing as a former gifted child maybe I was better at taking tests and retaining knowledge. But it made my work ethic shit. Yep, everyone is happy to call you a genius and let you coast through life until you get out of HS and realize there are things that take actual work to accomplish. It actually sets you up for failure pretty bad. That they are perfect little angels. Kids should be treated like regular humans with faults and responsibilities. My kid has started to be mean for the sake of being mean she gets a ton of stern, no, s and reason. Why that W-A-S-N-T okay? Lots of tears, but I think we're making progress. She's experimenting. At that age she probably doesn't realize she is being mean. With my kids I was pretty casual about correcting him so it didn't become a way of getting attention. Not being allowed to retaliate when someone attacks you. That their two choices as budding adults are going to college or flipping burgers. I have only a get and I work a decent job with good pay. Edit. I'm not saying college is wrong. I'm saying there are other choices. Edit too. X the military is a wonderful choice for furthering yourself. I'm a college dropout and will be starting my second position as a software engineer at 110k in the Midwest. I tell all my friends who are entering the tech field to focus on skills and not worry as much about a piece of paper. I'm gonna say it. Adults use PowerPoint as a fucking script. This teaches kids to do the same. For the love of God PowerPoint is for expanding on talking points. Expand on what's on the slide. Don't type a whole paragraph and re-read it word for word. More than that, PowerPoints are for asterisk, asterisk visual aid, asterisk, asterisk. If there's nothing visual on your PowerPoint and only text, then why the fuck do you even have it in PowerPoint? Hand out a Word document personally. It's telling children that if they don't get an education they'll have to be a plum to be a plumber, construction worker, electrician etc. as if it's a job for failures, rather than a viable alternative. Apparently the trade industry is slowly losing a lot of good new employees because people don't see it as good work, yes. I know it's not AC and that it is a lot of physical labor that may have injuries later. But I also know that some kids love working with their hands and a lot of people are looking down on people who have a trade skill like that. Edit. Took out garbage man. It's a bit controversial on whether it should be looked down on. I'll let you all be their judge of that. My dad always told me that any job that's legal is respectable. My parents told me that I'm going into a dead-end field with no real job prospects. I'm getting a degree in mechanical engineering, math, just ki- I know we need it, I just suck at it. There are three kinds of people in this world. The people who are good at math and the people who aren't. In the fort being a jerk is funny. I'm glad that brand of humor is dying. I don't think it is, an old prank. YouTubers are just renewing it with gullible kids to blindly acquiesce to authority. Definitely, I get anxiety whenever I'm around authority figures because I'm scared what will happen. A lot of parents need to stop teaching their children that they deserve everything. It makes spoiled little brats that never want to do anything themselves. On the other end of the spectrum we also need to stop teaching children that they are worthless. It makes suicidal adult, those are two extremes. So what are some examples of the fine line where Redditors will actually be 50-50? We should stop comparing them to other children which basically is telling them they are not good enough. 
not so much as children, but definitely little boys. I think we need to stop telling them to internalize all of their feelings. Telling them to just suck it up, and be a man about things. There is nothing wrong with expressing emotions, especially sadness and tears. I'd say we need to teach everyone this. As a boy, young man I did reach out for help and was ignored, belittled because I was a boy. And I did express my emotions and was called for it. Eventually I started bottling everything because I learned that no one would help believe me. And in fact I was considered everyone else's problem. Essentially I was told by men to, man up, grow up, suck it up, and I was told by women, how dare you have problems you entitled penis haver. Survived three suicide attempts now, didn't get diagnosed BP1 until I was 36 despite constantly asking for help since high school. I'm glad things are slowly changing now but there's a lot of progress still to be made. Shut up, boys don't cry. A dentist with what seemed like Parkinson's disease who didn't apply anesthetic correctly to me. Fuck that guy, and anyone like I miss you, I hope he doesn't treat anybody anymore. College education equals success. Neither does an HS diploma but I'd still advise getting one. It's not for everyone when right when they turn 18 but even if you're a successful plumber by 30, there are worse things to do with your time and money than get an associate degree. In BC, you can hardly land a job without high school anymore.